Okay, in uh, my previous video, I uh, discussed reasons why you might carry out um, or use HLM with repeated measures data in order to model uh, growth curves or individual growth curves. Um, and I showed you a couple of uh, data sets. Uh, one was uh, containing student level data in uh, horizontal format, and then one uh, containing the data in a vertical format. And what I mentioned was is that, uh, or the vertical format and the horizontal format were based on um, the data sets that were provided by uh, on the textbook website for uh, Heck et al.'s book, Multi Level and Longitudinal Modeling with IBM SPSS. Um, so what I thought I would do though in this video is just kind of show you really quickly how you can get data from a horizontal format into a vertical format since a lot of times it's the case when you are putting uh, data into SPSS or um, that uh, you might um, have um, your repeated measures represented as uh, different variables or separate variables. And um, so at any rate, uh, this data set we have student level data uh, ID is basically uh, a student level identifier. Um, these students are actually nested within uh, individual schools. We're not really going to focus on that so much. Um, but what we want to do is essentially take their scores on these variables and, and um, convert them into a vertical format and then also be able to represent, um, you know, incorporate time variables. Um, that represent the timing of measurements. We also have a couple of other variables, effective and SES, which are essentially individual difference uh, variables related to each student. So we don't really want, um, you know, we're not really assuming that uh, the, these two variables are gonna be different over the repeated measurements. Only, you know, these three variables should change. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to data and go down to use the restructure command in SPSS. It says, what do you want to do? I'm gonna click on restructure selected variables into cases. Click on next. And how many variable groups do you want to restructure? I'm just gonna stick with one. And so now you see, um, you know, basically we're, this is the, the box that we're gonna work from. It says case group identification. We're gonna use the case number um, which is basically our row number here, and the name of the new variable is going to be called ID1. Um, so we're just going to leave that um, as it is. Now, the variables to be transposed, we're going to use test1, test2, and test3. And so I'm going to move these over to this box here, and I'm going to give the, 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 the new test variable a name. So I'm just going to call it uh, test to be consistent with what uh, the presentation is in the in the textbook. So I'm going to essentially create a new variable test where the test scores at time one, two, and three are going to be uh, vertical or arranged vertically. The fixed variables are variables that I don't want to, um, you know, that I'm not assuming any uh, variation across. So we're just going to we're going to go ahead and move school code over to this box here. Um, effectiveness right here or perceived effectiveness SES. We're going to move those over as well. Um, it's not going to matter, but I can move the ID variable over as well if I wanted to. Um, it's just going to give me a, a new variable that's ID that's going to pretty much be mirrored here. So you can do it either way. Um, so I'm going to click next. How many index variables do you want to create? So the index variable is essentially going to, in our case, we're just going to use that as an indicator of when the repeated measurements occur, or basically the measurement occasion, if you will. So we'll call it one, two, and three, one, two, and three, and so forth. So we're gonna uh, click on next, and you'll see it says index by default. And so you can see there's the, the name of the index variable, and then you know basically one, two, and three, and it'll just continue on in that sequence uh, throughout the data set. So next, I will click on um, you know next, um, Basically, uh, we're just essentially creating a new data file. So really at this point, I can just kind of click through all of these and finish. You get a little box right here. This is not an error or anything like that. It's just basically, um, you, you just want to click on this. And so now you can see the restructured data. So you'll see that our new, you know, this is our student level identifier variable that we created. I could have called this case number or, or student number or whatever. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but you can see this is the first student's uh, data uh, contained in rows one, two, and three. The second student's data contained in rows 
four, five, and six, and so forth. You'll see that uh, school code is, is constant within each student. Uh, that's because that was treated as fixed. The effectiveness variable is constant within each student. The SES variable is constant within each student. That's because we only measured, you know, really, uh, uh, we only have one measurement of each of those, and we didn't ask for any kind of restructuring of those variables. Uh, the original ID variable that I was telling you about, by virtue of moving that over, we just got as another column here. So I can actually just uh, delete that column, or I can delete this column. Either one works. Um, the index variable, you can see right here we've got 1, 2, and 3, and then we've got our test new test variable, which represents one measurements at uh, measurement 1, 2, and 3. That's for student 1, then 1, 2, and 3 for student 2. And, and so forth. Now, if I want to, um, you know, one of the things I kind of showed you in the last video was that, um, you know, when uh, that um, it, with the time variable, um, if I convert, uh, you know, like my index variable to new variable, it's a time variable and have values of zero, one, and two, the zero is basically associated with the first um, measurement occasion and it would be the, the test score would be each person's um, um, initial starting value on the um, growth curve. And essentially, it would be the intercept of the growth curve line for each uh, student. So uh, to do this, what I can do is I can go to transform compute variable, and I'm just going to type in time, and then I'm going to say index 1 minus 1. And essentially, then I can click on OK. And so now you'll see um, in our uh, data set, I can find it here. Yeah, in our data set, now we have a new time variable with uh, values of 0, 1, and 2. Um, if I want to create uh, um, the square of time, so if I'm going to do a, uh, incorporate a quadratic trend in my uh, model or, or take into account a possible quadratic trend, then I can multiply, create a new variable that is the square of this. And so I can do this pretty easily just by going to transform variable, compute, and uh, just kind of reset. And I'll just call this, um, in the textbook he uses quad time. So I will just be consistent with that and then just say time. Uh, and then I can uh, essentially two asterisks and a, and a two is saying square the time variable. So now when I click on OK, you'll see that I get, that's the previous, uh, the new variable here. And so that's the quad time. Another way of doing this uh, could be to use the recode function. I just find it a little quicker to use the uh, compute function, but you could go to transform, and let's say I wanted to um, compute a new time variable. Um, I think in the book, they actually do it this way. And so what I could do is I could say, take the index variable, one right here, and I could give it a new name. I'll just call it time, and I'll just use a dot one uh, just to kind of illustrate uh, the, the the fact that we're doing the same thing and I'll say change and then I can say um, you know one I want to convert that to a zero uh, a two, value of two I'll convert to a one and then a value of three and I'll convert to a two and so when I click on add for each of those and then click on continue and on okay you can see you know we have the same thing as what we had done before um, and then you know, obviously we can do the, the, the same process if we wanted to create a, a quad time variable. So either way will work. Um, the point is, is that what we wanted to do was to be able to, um, you know, if we want to be able to uh, obtain those growth curves that I kind of showed you in the previous video, um, now we have the, the means to do it.